Drums in the distance Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. If you enjoy the review then consider leaving a comment and subscribing. Today we have a review written by Jace Glover and myself of the brand new World Rally Championship 8 on the Nintendo Switch. A big thanks to those guys for the review copy. The World Rally Championship series has been a staple of European motorsport since its inception in 1973. The WRC games based on seasons from the Real Championship series have been around since 2001, although there was a small gap in new titles between 2006 and 9. For the first time since 2010, this Behemoth racing simulator is making its way to a Nintendo console. In creating this newest release, publisher Big Ben Interactive and developer Kyloton pulled no punches. During development they worked closely with real rally drivers and held community days where the leaders in the WRC esports scene came together to improve everything about the experience and make the game as true to life as possible. Did it all pay off? Let's find out. Let me just caveat this by saying that I'm not the hugest fan of racing simulators. I've often found them to be overwhelming, requiring hours upon hours of play before you feel remotely ready for a real race. This is where WRC 8 initially grabbed my attention. At first, I struggled to get to grips with the tight controls and squirrely cars, finding myself spinning out on every turn and spending more time in the trees than on the road. However, WRC has a number of settings that make the game much more accessible for newcomers. First, controls are fully customizable, although in this respect, I found the default settings perfectly acceptable. And next, you can change the level of the CPU racers, where the lower the level, the longer their respective times be, ensuring that new players like myself have a chance to feel competitive. Additional settings including light turning assist, brake stabilisation and even an option that prevents you from crossing the start line too early, doing so obviously amounts to an instant 10 second penalty, are all here. Probably the most important option for accessibility though is the choice to completely turn off vehicle damage. As I said I spent plenty of time in the trees and I'm sure I would have never finished a race if I wasn't able to ignore the vehicle damage. Did I mention I was new to these types of games? If you're a series or racing sim veteran then don't fear as a realistic setting also exists. With the game set about as easy as I could make it I dove straight into career mode. Here players start in the June junior WRC circuit with nothing but a car and a couple of crew members and race their way up the ladder and into the WRC proper and then the WRC 2 series. The players tasked with numerous management decisions affecting their career, including recruiting new crew and choosing who attends each event and when to train, when to race or when to take a week off. All of your decisions have a true risk versus reward mechanic as resting a week will help your crew recover from fatigue but you won't be earning any points with a manufacturer or money to pay off your repair costs and salaries. Other factors players are asked to monitor in career mode include short-term and medium-term objectives, the completion of which earns you a monetary bonus and manufacturer reputation, as well as morale, which affects how efficient your crew works. The events themselves are quite varied. Any week where there isn't a rally scheduled, you'll have three options to choose from, one of which is always the option to rest. Other event types include manufacturer tryouts, where you try to impress other car manufacturers, extreme weather events, such as racing at night or on a gravel track in a thunderstorm, or my favorite, the historic races. In these, you're given a specific car and track from some of the biggest or most famous races ever held in the history of the WRC. As you complete events, you'll also gain experience. Leveling up rewards you with an R&D point to put into a skill tree of sorts. Skills including unlocking new types of professional, who knew racing teams hired their own meteorologists, increasing rewards, reducing costs, and once you're out of the junior WRC, you can even improve your car directly. If you aren't feeling up for micromanaging an entire crew and making all of those decisions, then don't fret. There is also a season mode where you can race in all the events without the worry of managing a team. Other modes include weekly challenges with various preset criteria, quick play, training and test area. Quick play allows you to pick up any of the available tracks and cars and customize the race conditions 
even down to the weather. Training is as it sounds, with preset tracks each focused on improving specific skills. The test area is a semi-open world one, where you can drive around freely and customize your car on the fly to get a feel for different maneuvers, car types, and terrains. There's no shortage of things to do, but let's talk about the actual racing. Driving in any type of event feels incredible in WRC8. As I previously mentioned, the developers worked hand in hand with gaming professionals and real rally car drivers alike to make this iteration the best it could possibly be. And in my humble opinion, they completely nailed it. Every type of terrain and car feels unique. The tyre physics are spot on as you're forced to adjust your playstyle with every different event. Racing a dirt track on a rainy night will see you slip in and slide in into every turn. Into left two, into right two. While driving on dry asphalt during the day will give you much more control and consequently allow for more speed. During rallies, which require racing in multiple events before changing out the tyres, you can even feel the degradation and wear and tear as your car loses traction the weaker your tyres get. I'm absolutely blown away by the level of realism and detail achieved and how many different ways the game can change the feeling of a race. The only complaint I have is that the crash physics are maybe a bit too generous, favouring landing the car on its wheels and rarely allowing you to flip it over. Into danger, left one, narrows into right two. Additionally, sometimes leaving the track results in a time penalty, but other times it doesn't, and this seems randomly inconsistent. Whether or not this has to do with the difficulty setting I had it on, I'm unsure. These are minor quibbles at best though, and the gameplay here is about as good as I've ever experienced in a racing sim. It's safe to say that I'm hooked, and gameplay for me scores 18 out of 20. The controls are tight, responsive, and fully customizable. They also score 18 out of 20. In terms of the audio, the spatial sounds are excellent. Danger, hard break for square left. And left four, tighten short into kinks 200. Of particular note is how the car sounds change depending on the surface type you're on. Into left three, short into right three, short. If you're on that bumpy gravel track, you'll feel vibrations and sounds linked to the pebbles hitting the undercarriage of your car. In-game music is suitably fitting, but nothing overly standout. And there were some slightly stranger sounds when you run off the track, but otherwise the overall sound palette is very good. Probably the most important and notable of these is your co-driver, who does an excellent job of calling the turns before you reach them, and after a few hours of play, you'll be judging many of these subconsciously based on the numbers he's calling out. Right four, open. Visually, WRC8 looks good but not great. They've clearly had to drop the dynamic shadows on much of the scenery elements. Your car still looks okay but it suffers from jaggy edges around the edge so there mustn't be a great deal of anti-aliasing going on perhaps to keep the image more crispy. The visuals are by no means bad but I can definitely see where they've had to cut a few corners. Ooh, that's a bad pun isn't it? <laughs> that all being said it's running brilliantly and I guess that is the most important thing in a racing game. You're not going to be getting 60 frames per second, but it seems to be a very consistent 30 in both docked and handheld, which, in my opinion, is the most important thing. The only minor visual glitch that we noticed is when you go into the crew management menu. It seems to chug there every time, but then goes back to normal as soon as you back out of the menu. Overall visuals score 15 out of 20, while the audio scores 17 out of 20. WRC 8 costs £44.99, €49.99 or $49.99 digitally, but will also have a physical release that I'm sure you'll be able to find for much less. For this, you're getting your hands on possibly the best racing sim currently on the Nintendo Switch with 50 teams, 14 rallies, over 100 special stages to race, plus a plethora of modes to enjoy. There's no shortage of content here. Each race also includes online leaderboards, so you can test yourself against the world's best, and of course brag to your friends when you knock off their time. Cheers Jace, you've uh, 
you've done that already, haven't you? Great. For those like me who never played many realistic racers, this one also includes a number of options that improve accessibility and make it easier on newcomers to learn the ropes. In addition to the base game, there's also some DLC available in the form of senior staff members for a career mode, as well as historic cars. Alternatively, you can save about £3 and purchase the entire bundle with the base game for £54.99. Whichever way you slice it, there's no denying the quality and content of the game. Value scores 18 out of 20. Drums in the distance Getting closer, closer Catching up to you now So there we have it. A big thanks to Jace for writing this review. I think he did an absolutely brilliant job. He was a bit scared because he's not really a simulation driving fan. But after a few hours, I had texts saying how much he was enjoying himself. Overall, WRC8 scores a switch up score of 86%. A big thanks to Jace for writing this review with me. If you enjoyed the content, then consider subscribing. And as always, for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!